Today on NBCC Journalism Showcase. Excessive energy when a boost is bad. Dependent on debit, what to do to keep the swipe swiping. A cough that is cause for concern. Is whooping cough on the rise? Hello and welcome to NBCC Journalism Showcase. I'm Jennifer McNeil Hay. And I'm Evan Thomas. We have some great information lined up for you over the next half hour. It can be easy for some students to eat junk for breakfast or skip it all together. But how is this affecting their health? Jill Constantine reports. At NBCC Woodstock, some students find themselves eating a breakfast that is quick and unhealthy. Sometimes they skip it all together. Many sip a coffee in replacement of a meal before they head to class. I uh, usually a glass of milk and a glass of orange juice. Definitely have to start with a coffee. Well, I start out with coffee and a cigarette. Well, for breakfast, I just drink uh, a coffee and I uh, just got something quick on the go. I have five Oreo cookies and a cup of coffee on the drive here every morning. Over the past five years, 115 breakfast programs have been put in place by Breakfast for Learning New Brunswick, reaching over 10,000 students. Instructor Maria Donovan at the college sees students every day. Sleepy, yeah, uh, not quite awake yet. They haven't, uh, and so like I say, fuel for the brain. Um, lack of participation in the class and uh, eager to get out for break. We spoke with nutritionist Wendy Cummings. She said that when a person eats unhealthy foods in the morning, they're not providing themselves with the nutrients their body needs. Canada's Food Guide offers quick and easy breakfast ideas to help your body get the nutrients it needs for the day. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Eating food grown closer to home has become a hot topic. Advocates say that it is healthier and helps support the local economy. But has it caught on here? Jeff Stairs takes a look. New Brunswick is full of farmers. Many families here have been growing food for generations but often the food they produce is eaten in other provinces, the United States, and even Japan. Ellen Helmuth is a retired farmer. She says about four decades ago, the focus on food shifted from local to global. Coming into the 60s and the 70s, fa family farms were encouraged to get big or get out. Um, that was the, the trend at the time. Helmuth was one of the founders of the Woodstock Farm Market. The market was established in 1973 to make it easier for consumers to purchase local food products. Steve Helley writes a weekly column on resource issues for the Bugle Observer. He says that people need to make an effort to buy local in order to make it worthwhile for the farmers. The neighbors have to commit to that uh, to some degree to make enough of a market for the farmer to be able to do it and make a living at it. Uh, it doesn't do him any good if he's only got six people to sell. Helly is involved with a group hoping to establish a community garden in Woodstock this spring. The garden will give amateurs an opportunity to grow their own food from seed to plate. Eating local could become increasingly important as the price and availability of imported food continues to fluctuate. Farmers here are hopeful that shoppers will keep in mind the bounty in their own backyard. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. Digging into your morning bowl of cereal is getting more expensive these days. Michael McDonald took a look at the rising price of milk. The price of milk has gone up again. Effective February 1st, the New Brunswick Farm Products Commission has increased the cost by five cents per liter. I think it sucks. I think the prices should be the same no matter where you go. I guess it's like everything else. Everything seems to go up in price. It's excessive from taking the price over across, but we do have a lot more regulation here. Milk marketing boards protect the dairy industry. The cost of production have been going up. That means the cost of the product is going up as well. You, if, you, if you can't cover your costs as you go along, well, then you'll fall behind. Vernon Black is a dairy farmer. He says controlled prices sustain Canadian farms and provide a quality product. If they want farms in Canada that are sustainable, then go by the environmental rules and all the food safety rules, you better support your Canadian farmers. Some people are dissatisfied. They have no control over what they pay for milk. I'm going to have to buy milk at whatever price. So. Consumers are going to have to learn to live with the high price of milk if they value the standards of production here in Canada. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. A common food filler can be the source of great discomfort for some people, but options are now easier to find for people with wheat allergies. Doug Dickinson has the story. 
I contacted the Canadian Celiac Association when I first found out I had celiac and I was able to get a pocket guide and that was a lifesaver when trying to buy groceries. It is the gluten in wheat, rye and barley that makes many people with the food allergy uncomfortable, often suffering stomach pain and even diarrhea. It sometimes leads to celiac disease, painful damage to the intestinal walls. Erin Clark was diagnosed with celiac disease nearly six years ago. She says adjusting to the diet is a challenge that has gotten easier with the greater availability of gluten-free foods. People with gluten intolerance avoid breads and other wheat-based foods. More stores now offer a variety of wheat-free goods including pies, muffins and bread. Well, it was just customers coming in asking for the product and no one else in the area was doing it. So from that there we've seen the need and decided that it was something that we would take on. Tammy McQuaid has been selling gluten-free products since last September. She runs a local bake shop. The demand varies from week to week because quite often what they do with the gluten-free items is everybody buys them in advance and freezes them. So when someone comes in they may buy um, 10 loaves of bread, freeze it, remove it from the freezer as they need it. People who are on the gluten-free diet have more options now than they did in the past. There are gluten-free cookbooks and gluten-free products are available at grocery stores. This local cafe has also recently made gluten-free bread available to customers. The owner of the cafe believes having more options in small towns like Woodstock will keep people shopping close to home. It's just the fact that we are showing that we have options in a small town that are equal to, you know, larger, uh, larger towns or small cities or any city and so that you don't have to drive to freight dinner, you don't have to drive to wherever um, or order your gluten-free options. Lori Cummings lives outside Fredericton in Beaverdale. Her daughter Kendra has celiac disease. I'm finding it easier because I know what to look for and I know where to look for it. And we know all the brands. And now we know the brand names and we read, we were going up and down the grocery aisle reading absolutely every label, trying to find things she could have. We'd try and find, you know, we'd check out foods that we were having that she liked and find out that, oh, guess what, she can't have this. According to research group Packaged Facts, projected sales of gluten-free products over the last year reached $2.64 billion. In Woodstock, Doug Dickinson, Community College News. If you take a peek at the ingredients list on some of your favorite products, you might be surprised to see how many of them contain aspartame. Ashley Dunbar took a look at how this additive might be affecting your health. It can be found in soft drinks, packages of gum and hidden in the list of ingredients in your food. Many people turn to aspartame as a way to lose weight. Dr. Carrie Dow is a licensed naturopathic in Fredericton. She says that can sometimes have the opposite effect. And that it can actually make people gain weight um, and I don't think they fully understand why that's happening. Wendy Cummings is a nutritionist at Simply for Life in Woodstock. She says when trying to lose weight, you have to get back to the basics. You know, we've kind of gone so that we can still overeat, consume a sugar substitute, and it shouldn't be that way. We should get back to the basics of good, healthy honey, maple syrup, and things of that nature. Dr. Dow says there are many substitutes when it comes to sweeteners. If a patient asks me what a better alternative is when it comes to artificial sweeteners. I'll recommend Stevia. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but it's a non-chemical um, natural sweetener that's derived from a plant in Paraguay, and it's got no calories, no carbohydrates. Although artificial sweeteners may seem like the right choice when trying to lose weight, a balanced diet and exercise is the right way to go. In Woodstock, Ashley Dunbar, Community College News. Energy drinks are sold everywhere, from corner stores to vending machines but young people are consuming them with little understanding of the potential health risk involved. Kyle Dupont has the story. Energy drinks are very popular among young adults, but most kids have no idea what they're actually putting in their bodies. Patty Hansen refuses to sell to young teens, even though there are no laws in place. With all the caffeine and everything that's in it, I won't sell it. Some stores may not sell them, but with easy access like this pot machine, no one can really control it. So some people may ask, who's to take responsibility? 
Is it the companies, the government, stores, or the consumers? But who's responsible for when a 12-year-old walks into a store or comes up to a pop machine like this and takes one out? The companies themselves say that they've put an age limit of, of you know, children under 12 should not consume it and pregnant women should not consume these products. Wilkinson says that warning labels are not enough. When the government is faced with this, they are also they are saying that it's the responsibility of the consumer. Energy drinks carry serious health risks such as nausea and heart palpitations. Alex Lejeur drinks about one a day and did not know this. Probably not as much as I should be, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not really worried. When mixed with alcohol, the risks are significantly increased. Many people understand this, yet they still choose to ignore it. I've also asked for those that have tried it, mixing it with alcohol, if they would stop, and at this time, they're not willing to stop even though they know the risks. Three states have already banned alcoholic energy drinks, but Health Canada maintains they can still be sold here. In Woodstock, Kyle Dufont, Community College News. You know, Jen, when I've had a lot of energy, I find it really hard to focus when I'm here at the NBCC library. I know what you mean, Evan. Every time I have too much coffee, I have a really hard time focusing. But when we come back, we're going to be taking the hoop out of the cough season. And is ethanol clogging up your engine? Right up to this. Welcome back to NBCC Woodstock Journalism Showcase. I'm Jennifer McNeil Hay. And I'm Evan Thomas. We're here in the beautiful NBCC Woodstock Greenhouse Landscaping Department. Some New Brunswick gas stations are beginning to sell 10% ethanol fuel. But that has some folks wondering what it will do to their older engines. Tony Boschois has more. Ethanol is a type of alcohol that is used as a biofuel. 10% ethanol fuel is currently available and people are concerned about reports it can damage your engine. Jeff Wright owns Wright's Esso and believes that there is nothing to be concerned about. Reports on the, in the news media that uh, the ethanol can cause problems, and, and yes, I think there has been some problems, but uh, cars that have been manufactured since 1970 can burn up to 10% ethanol. He says people tend to be afraid of the unknown. The use of ethanol gasoline isn't something new. It's just something new to New Brunswick. The only way it can do any damage to any engine is if it sits there for a very long time. The reason for that is ethanol's short shelf life. It is. It has a short shelf life. So um, for seasonal vehicles or for outboard motors, uh, um, lawn mowers, snow blowers, things to sit around for a long period of time, you really should be using Supreme Gas because Supreme Gas does not have the ethanol in it. Water can have negative effects on ethanol as well, but gas stations have precautions to stop water from getting into your tank. We now have uh, specialized filters that we put on our gas pumps. Uh, those specialized filters are essentially are just like a baby's uh, diaper. Um, when water hits them, they expand and they shut off the flow of fuel. People are still afraid of using ethanol products. There hasn't been a whole lot of questions except for this morning. I had one buddy, he did not want the ethanol. Even in older vehicles, the only problem you might have is just having to change the gas filters a little more often. So as long as you drive, it should be perfectly safe. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Students rely heavily on their debit cards. But what are some precautions they could take to keep their cards from leaving them holding the bag at the cash register? Jocelyn Turner has the answers. It's not a secret that it costs money to go to college. With students relying on their debit and credit cards to pay for the necessities, there's always the possibility that that magnet might not be up to the task. Local client care manager Margaret Feinlater says there are a few small things students can do to protect their cards. To avoid having that card uh, near any type of other magnetic strips because, or, or any type of magnet. Uh, it'll demagnetize it. Feinlater also says to be cautious of the anti-theft devices that department stores use. But well, what sort of problems have students had with their cards? College student Josh Cooper says he's had a few issues with the plastic. It'll go through the whole process and the, it'll then say that the pin number is wrong. And after all that, somebody will rub it against their jeans or their shirt and then it'll work all, all of a sudden. Cooper says he's glad they brought out the new security chips on debit cards. You don't have to worry about the about the magnetic strip wearing off anymore. Feinlater says that yes, they've had had a few people who have had issues with their debit cards, but do card users remember having been told about the precautions to take with their cards? 
know they have never done that, but I know that you shouldn't heat it up. If you follow these guidelines and take good care of your card, it should never become demagnetized. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Many college and university students may feel swamped with work. Some turn to partying. But what is there for underage students? Julian Trainer looks into what there is to do while you are young. College is supposed to be a fun experience. All work and no play makes for a dull student. However, many social situations in college seem to revolve around alcohol, leaving many thinking there are no other alternatives for fun, especially in a small town. Greg Robichaud is a photography student at NBCC Woodstock. He agrees that in a small town, there isn't much for younger students to do. We need to have a few more clubs from recreation stuff, even if, like, there's an archery club in town. If people could get into that, we'd be fine. It would at least be something to do. Greg is not the only one who feels this way. Other students also feel that life in a small town is not that fun unless you're 19 or older. For the non-drinkers, just me, you know, unless you're 19 or up. Yeah, for, yeah, for unless you're 19 and up, there's not a whole lot to do around here. There's not really much that I've seen that's around town that, uh, that you can do. For the orientation week, we pretty much did everything that was available in Woodstock during that one little week. This pool hall is empty right now, but every Thursday night, the place is packed with students. Some go to drink, others go for social interaction. But one thing is the same for all of them. They are all over the age of 19. When living in a small town, many students feel as though there's not a whole lot to do. But is this the case? NBCC Student Activities Coordinator Hillary Stockford says no. For those students that are under the age of 19 and aren't able to drink, I'd have to say the majority of our events um, appeal to those students. We offer various things from uh, events during the school day, at our noon hours, we have a winter carnival, we do stuff during Halloween, we have a regular um, floor hockey league that runs three days a week, we do noon hour exercise classes that kind of are geared more towards women but are open to anybody, we have a local club, a GSA club that meets, we have pool tournaments and stuff like that, that's just during the school day. There are also evening events including movie night, bowling and free swimming. These activities are alcohol free fit for all ages. Though it may appear social events with alcohol are nearly inescapable for underage students, they can be avoided. However, the students we talk to suggest there needs to be more alternatives available if they're to stay out of trouble. Jillian Trainer, Community College News, Woodstock. Coming up next, how was Jennifer Lopez ahead of the pack when she appeared in a public service announcement on April 24, 2009? We'll have your answer after the break. Welcome back. Before we left, we asked you what JLo was worried about when she appeared in a public service announcement on April 24th, 2009. And the answer is whooping cough. Whooping cough is on the rise. For most of us, it's just a nagging cough. But for a newborn like Mackenzie, it could be deadly. <coughs> whooping cough is a highly contagious disease that affects the lungs and throat. Newborn infants are particularly at risk from this illness. Outbreaks of whooping cough have increased steadily over the past two decades occurring every three to five years. The last outbreak was in 2004, and experts say the province is overdue. Having a cough, um, and at the end of the cough, a whooping sound coming in from when, in children, gas, getting that gasping breath. You won't see that though, generally with adults. Um, it's just a nagging, dry cough that would show up. Daphne Kennedy is a nursing instructor at NBCC Woodstock. She says not immunizing your child can be a fatal mistake. But one in a hundred of the children who do get hospitalized will die from it. So it's quite, it can be deadly and it's quite risky for parents to not immunize their child. Josh Parsons is a new parent who thinks the whooping cough situation is overblown. I think, I think it's all just you know, the loadable like the H1N1 vaccine. Everybody, everybody needs it. 
everybody has to have it and it's just it's one of those things. The New Brunswick government is offering free vaccinations for parents with newborns to try and prevent an outbreak of the illness. 14 cases have already been recorded in the province this year compared to just 15 in 2010. In Woodstock, I'm Mike Trusiak for Community College News. Some people say that mixed martial arts is very violent, but some parents say that it teaches their kids more than the ability to fight back. Ethan Hasselet has more. Mixed martial arts, or MMA, is a fighting sport. Holds, flips, and tackles are used to make your opponent tap. Some parents have put their kids into it for other reasons, like Deanna Toma. Because he lives in a community where there is absolutely nothing to do for youth, so he wanted to do it. And I said it would be a great opportunity for him to join something. It can be violent, but there is constant supervision, especially for the younger ones. David Vartor is an instructor for a group of young MMA fighters. So as long as you're careful and the instructor uh, uh, doesn't allow them to uh, go a little too rough, then I think it's fairly safe. The group has piles of safety gear for aspiring. On most nights, it's simply techniques with no real fighting. Some say the sport encourages violence. Others disagree. No, absolutely not. I think it does the opposite. I think that it protects them when they're in a violent situation. MMA is about more than just self-protection. The sport encourages people to get moving and enjoy physical activity. Well, uh, MMA is mixed martial arts. It's, uh, it's a variety of different martial arts. It's, uh, it, there's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of uh, conditioning. Some parents and instructors told me the point is more about self-discipline. Although MMA is seen by many as a violent sport, its goal is not to support it. Like any other sport, they have rules and regulations. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. All work and no play can make school a dull place to be. Jacob Savard found some electrical students who were getting a charge out of pranking some of their fellow classmates. Something was very different at MBCC Woodstock this week, leaving people puzzled and surprised. Well, I, I don't know what to think. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know why they are. No? <laughs> Mysterious tape on locks and rope preventing access to certain lockers. I stood outside these lockers today to find out exactly why they're roped up. I have no idea. I got a feeling let's find out. No lockout system? New one? April Fools! You can't get into your locker! <laughs> As it turns out, some electrical students have been pulling pranks recently. This joke forced students to waste time cutting out their own locks. Yet, this has not been the first big prank. They have been occurring more and more frequently, according to the electrical students. Oh, they're practical jokers. <laughs> they're always pulling jokes on everybody. <laughs> the tape and rope may have been a hassle for some, but everyone managed to open their locker on time and made it to class. In Woodstock, <laughs> Jacob Savard, Community College News. In other shows on Rogers by NBCC Journalism students, learn how new technology is changing journalism in 2011, a news odyssey. In Citizen Journalism, see what it's like to blog about New Brunswick politics. In Achieving Success Alumni Showcase, meet some accomplished graduates of NBCC Woodstock. And in People, News and Democracy, the media's role goes under the scope. Well, that's all the time we have for today. For these stories and more, you can go to jschoolnbcc.ca. We hope you enjoyed the show. Bye.